Well, so we're talking about some of the comments that we have been hearing from Adam Peters at the Combine. Let's get into it. And welcome back to another video here on the Washington Football Maniacs podcast. If you're new here, this channel is dedicated to the Washington Commanders news and commentary and whatever else that we may want to bring you. So please make sure you have subscribed to the channel. And when you do, also make sure you hit that notification bell so you won't miss any other video releases. You can also check out our podcast on Podbean if you want to hear the audio um, and as I, I've been saying this for a long time now, but uh, we will be branching out to Apple and Spotify podcasts as well and other areas. So uh, you just want to take advantage of that. With that said, so speaking of taking advantage, Adam Peters took the opportunity, the advantage to um, talk to the, the media and talk a little bit about um, the quarterback situation and just you know how they're going to approach the draft and a little bit of free agency and honestly i think all of us are so starved for any type of tidbit or any type of clue as to what the washington commanders are going to do and so yesterday um adam peters had talked about brock purdy and when he was with San Francisco, he made the comment that he said, you, we didn't know what we, if we knew what we had in Brock Purdy, we would have drafted him a lot sooner. And then he kind of says the comment after that, you know, we got to find a new quarterback. And everybody jumped on that. Everybody's like, well, you can, I guess Sam Howell, uh, that, that's the nail in the coffin for you, buddy. Um, because Adam Peters is saying that we got to find a new quarterback. You're the old one. This is not going to work for you. But then later on, if you listen to more of the interview, Adam Peters goes on to say that he's had uh, some very good conversations with Sam Howell. As a matter of fact, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, he saw Sam Howell at the facilities. And so, he invites him out for a walk around the campus and had a very good conversation. Got to know him a lot better and uh, also says that um, between him and, and, and Dan Quinn that they love what they have with Sam Howe. And so then yeah, that that's almost kind of like the, okay, is, is he saying that to backtrack on the got to find the new quarterback thing or, you know, is that actually the truth? Do they actually like what they see in Sam Howe? Does it mean that Sam Howe is still going to have an opportunity to compete for the starting position? And I think, honestly, he is. I think he's still going to have the opportunity. And I know a lot of folks hate that idea. They just hate it because they have given up on Sam Howe. You know, toward the end of this past season, a lot of people were like, I've seen enough. I've seen enough. He is not a quarterback in the league. Uh, despite anything else, you know, any other type of, of, you know, idea of a situation that he may have been in, just Sam Howell is just not the guy. And uh, I've always maintained that whoever the guy is going to be, including Sam Howell, I will support 100%. Whoever that this front office and this coaching staff chooses to name QB one. Um, and actually it will wind up being the coaching staff who ultimately names their, their starting quarterback. But it'll be the front office too going out and trying to find that guy um, to supplement Sam Howe or to replace Sam Howe, whatever it may be. I will support 100%, you know, because uh, I, I honestly, I believe in this front office 
It's been a long time since I've been able to say that. It's been a long time since anybody has been able to say that they believe in this front office. And this coaching staff, I mean, you got to admit, now I know there's still people out there who's posting these stupid um, Rivera 2.0 mem- memes um, of uh, Dan Quinn. And so far, I think you can grade Dan Quinn as honestly a great A with the um, staff that he has assembled. I mean, he has assembled an outstanding coaching staff. And this is something that was very high with Joe Gibbs. Uh, When Joe Gibbs was here, he had an outstanding coaching staff, which helped him to become one of the best coaches in history, honestly. And so you're as good as your coaching staff. I think even Joe Gibbs himself had said the same thing. So um, I, I commend Dan Quinn for putting together a great coaching staff. And likewise, I think that between this coaching staff and this front office led by Adam Peters, they're going to decide exactly what needs to happen at quarterback. Now, I'm going on the record, and this is being recorded, so if you didn't hear this, then you either cut off the video too quickly or you're just not listening and paying attention. But I don't have any ideas at all that Sam Howe is going to be the starter this coming year. I'll have a little bit more of a clear idea of what's going to happen probably after the draft. Probably not after free agency because, you know, as much as I I mentioned about being okay with having Kirk Cousins back, I don't think Cousins, honestly, is going to fit the mold of what Dan Quinn is really wanting out of his quarterback. I I think that he checks off a lot of boxes. Um, but he he also wants a guy who's mobile. Kirk Cousins is probably not going to be the most mobile guy at this point. So uh, he he's he's more of your pocket passer. So probably not going to be Kirk Cousins. But I'm just saying this to say that I have no expectations that Sam Howell is going to be able to retain his quarter starting quarterback job, or that he's going to be able to beat out the rookie that gets drafted if, in fact, that is what's going to happen, which I have a feeling it is. The only question is, is it going to be at number two or are they trading down? Um, So I hope that people understands that and hears it because the thing that I can't stand more than anything else is when a lot of Washington fans want to group everybody into certain camps and they want to divide everybody, you know, if you like Sam Howell, if you're not willing to go in and, and say all this nasty stuff about Sam Howell, then you're labeled a howler. You know, just like when we had Taylor Heineke. You know, the Heineke hive is out here buzzing around again. You know, I mean, it's like, why do people want to divide people so much? I, I don't understand. You're supposed to be, you're supposed to be under one uh, team uh, fandom, <laughs> fandom ship. Did I just make up a new word, fandom ship? If I did, it's going in the dictionary. But, you know, basically, that's my thing. It's like, I like Sam Howell. I want to see him succeed. And there are people who don't want to see him succeed, either because they want to save face and they're just ready to prove to people who were open-minded with Sam Howell that, hey, you were wrong. He, he really did suck. And, um... I don't get that. I'm like, if Sam Howell winds up, you know, just totally going off this year, you know, beats out the the drafted quarterback, you know, goes on a 10, 11 game winning streak. I mean, I I hope I hope the goodness that happens. Um, and I'm not going to be considered a howler for doing that. I'm going to be considered, hopefully, a Commanders fan for supporting whichever quarterback is going to be in that position to hopefully succeed with this team. But believe me, no quarterback is going to succeed if the front office is not able to address um, the issues on the offensive line um, and certainly making sure that 
we have an offense that's more well balanced. That's something that Dan Quinn had had spoke about in his press conference yesterday was that he's looking for an offense that's well balanced. It feeds off of uh, the run game that feeds off of play action. So he's not looking for this. We're going to run the football 80% of the time and, or I should say uh, we're going to pass the football 80% of the time and maybe we will run it 20% of the rest of the time. No, he wants a well-balanced offense. And I think that helps a young quarterback. If he's in a balanced offense where there's a lot of running, um, where it opens up maybe some more higher percentage passes to get him into a rhythm, it's ultimately going to help anybody. And why would it not even help out somebody like Sam Howell, who obviously had a lot thrown at him, uh, extremely unbalanced offense, an uh, offensive line that did not block for him half the time. And yes, he still had a lot of blame on him for holding on to the football too long, maybe not, you know, having to, uh, some issues with with reads and things like that. But um, at the same time, a lot of rookie quarterbacks thrown in that same situation is going to honestly wind up really playing the same way unless they are extremely special and you got somebody who truly is a generational player and not every quarterback coming out of the first round especially in the top three are going to be generational players just because they're drafted that high doesn't mean they're going to be generational it's not an automatic thing they've got to prove it they've got to play and You'll you'll be able to tell if they are, um, but you won't. And you, honestly, you really won't start to really truly reap those benefits until you've seen them in the league two three years. But you'll know right away if this guy has that tendency to be special. Um, and so, if we do draft quarterback at number two, which I think probably more than likely we do. Um, let's just pump up brakes on, uh, you know, what happens after that. Um, honestly, don't care who we draft. I really don't. Um, I, like I said, it's going to be 100% me backing them. Um, I'm not going to be put into one camp or the other. Um, I'm going to support them until obviously we realize they're not cut out to play or, you know, they they want to lead the team or whatever the, it is. So, and I think, I really wish that more Washington fans would be the same way and not keep dividing people and not keep looking for anything and everything in order to cut down guys like Sam Howell. Uh, to me, it just doesn't make any sense. But anyway, um, overall, to summarize, yeah, we heard that Adam Peters said he's got to find a new quarterback. We also heard great things about Sam Howell. This is the, as someone put it on Twitter earlier, yes, I still call it Twitter, that this is the season, season of lying. <laughs> um, I don't know if I would be that strong to say they're lying, but just that there's going to be a lot of smoke screens uh, smoking mirrors or whatever, however you want to put it, don't don't believe everything you you hear, but um, at the same time, just sit back and enjoy it. This team is about ready to change, and it's going to change for the better. And if you like that, please give this video a like, um, share it with others, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. And with that said, I will see you in the next one.